Ex inmates of Reddit, what was the stupidest thing you've seen a new inmate do on his first day in prison? This may not have been his first day, but I will never forget this. This while I was in the intake tank which is the first tank or section you go into after being processed in county. This young kid comes into county and keeps complaining that he doesn't get his cannabinol and other marijuana related prescriptions in jail. He was really arrogant and constant pissing everyone off. During count one day as we were all in our bunks he starts complaining again and then says to the guard what if we all riot immediately like 10 other guys yell very loudly we don't know or agree with him. The guard then says what the fact did you say? The kid then continues about rioting and that he has rights. Everyone in the tank faking stays like frozen in their bunk trying their best to be non-threatening and also show they have no interest in what this moron is saying. So the guard picks him up by his throat and slams him into the wall. After scaring the kid sheet less, he explains he has a new charge for inciting a riot. Kid gets hauled off to solitary. Never saw him again, but I heard he spent the rest of his 306090 whatever amount days in solitary. Absolutely insane to me that he'd say that in a faking county jail. I did 14 years in federal prison for wire fraud. I got out last February. I'm 36. Some things I can say are these while your sexuality may not be an issue outside of prison, inside prison, male inmates who are openly gay are generally disrespected gambling and drugs create debts that are at some point unable to be paid and can result in serious issues for yourself. Most prisons operate a social hierarchy based on gang affiliations or hometowns, although there can be large separations based on race. However, rapists and child molesters will basically be free game for anyone who wants to take their sheet or torment them you might have been a bad as outside of prison, but generally you can't fight several people at once, which is what would happen if you talk about how much of a bad as you are. Keep your sheet to yourself and don't talk crazy to people, which is seen as disrespect. Respect slash disrespect has a different meaning in prison, and you'll figure it out best to just keep to yourself, unless as much as possible, unless you want to embrace prison life and become institutionalized. Prison is not a place to make friends. I got bunk restriction while I was in jail on one of my first night. Twice a day they did roll call, where we all had to sit on our bunk. Be quiet while the officer came bunk to bunk and checked all of our wristbands and made sure we were all who we are. Halfway through he was doing this someone rips the loudest, fattest, longest wet fatched I've ever heard in my life. Me having the mind of a 5 year old burst into laughter I've never heard a fatched like this in my life a few other guys laugh, but even thinking of it now I giggle about it. Anyways the officer is like alright settle down, but I can't stop laughing about it, he tells me to calm down. But I tell him through my tears of laughter I literally cannot help it. I really couldn't it was the funniest thing that happened the few days I was in there. Anyway he gets pissed I try to explain I'm not trying to be rude and disobey him through my laughter. But he isn't having it. Luckily he just gave me bunk restriction and didn't punish everyone but I could see the TV from my bunk. So I just hung out the rest of the night. Point TLDR I couldn't stop laughing at the biggest fatched I ever heard in my life and got grounded to my bunk for a night. Point edit. Obligatory wow my top comment is about fatched me could be worse. Spent a year in a Bangkok prison. Saw lots of sheet go down but the one story I have that's relevant to your question has to be this English guy that turned up one day point it was actually the first and only other British guy I would encounter while I was there and the moment he came through the gates I was called over to try and communicate and translate for him. He was refusing to talk to anyone, basically going on a silent strike because he thought he wasn't supposed to be there and they were denying his human rights and all that shit. First thing that happens when you enter the prison is they shave your head. This kid had massive dreadlocks and didn't want anyone touching them, but at this point he had already made his bed and he was going to have to sleep in it. I went over to him and introduced myself, asked him what his name was, where he was from etc point, but he just stared at me in silence the whole time. One of the guards gave me a photocopy of his passport, so I could see his name, age and where he was from etc point against all odds this kid was actually from my hometown, so my face lit up, finally I would have someone to talk to, and I'm sure we could chat cheat and bond, while we were in there. God did I need that. 
but he just refused to engage with anyone, even me who was trying so hard to get a word out of him. I explained over and over that he'd lost the game, he's in prison now and there is no way out of it so just do what the guards say. They're going to shave your head first of all, and there's nothing you can do about it point. Because no one had explained to me what exactly was going on I was just confused why he wasn't talking to me. The more I spoke to him, and the more he refused to talk back, the more pissed off I got. I just couldn't understand why he was being so difficult, and by the end of our encounter I was faking shouting at him telling him to stop being such a little bitch and just accept your fate. I didn't know if he was retarded or genuinely couldn't speak, but it became clear that he was just putting on an act point eventually I just told the guards there is fuck all I can do, if he's not willing to speak so go ahead and do what you've gotta do. I said my goodbyes to him and told him he really needs to accept his fate, it will be easier on everyone, and when you're ready to talk I'll be here, because let me tell you, that's the best thing you could hope for in a place like this. He ended up being pinned down by the guards and his dread shave off while he was screaming and screaming. Of course I felt bad but come on, time to swallow your pride mate. He was then admitted to the prison and he came to sit with me. He still refused to speak, so I got a notebook and pen and we communicated via writing for a few days. The guards didn't know what to do with him and all the prisoners just thought he was a mental case. I still wasn't sure myself point after a few days of gossip another prisoner told me that the kid was faking it when I asked how he knew he told me that he was arrested at the same police station with him and the whole time he was in custody this kid had been screaming bloody murder at the officers claiming the violation of humans rights and all that shit. Then one day when I was having a chat with him by means of writing he started asking me about the embassy, and I told him about what services they offer, and how they can help etc. Then he wrote down on the paper, can I make a phone call through the embassy? I just looked at him dead on, and said what good is a phone call, if you can't faking talk. I couldn't help, but chuckle and he knew the gig was up, at least with me. It was not long after, that the kid was taken from the prison, and carted off to a mental health institution, so they could evaluate him. I didn't see him for a few weeks when he suddenly reappeared looking very disheveled and completely traumatized. And wouldn't you know it, he could suddenly speak. He started telling me about the horrors of the mental institution he had just experienced, and my god it sounded faking awful, even worse than the hellhole I was currently in, which is really saying something point we bonded for the month or so he was there, and we exchanged details. I have spoken to him since I've been out, and it turns out we have a fair amount of mutual friends which is one hell of a coincidence point anyway the point of this story is he was a faking idiot for simply not cooperating with the guards and the prison rules. It's all well and good putting up a fight in the courts and with the local police. But once you're past that and you find yourself in prison, just faking do as you're told. They can make life so much worse for you. Long but funny story. I worked for a PD. We arrested a local regular on an outstanding FDA warrant. The guy was always a pitter point the county jail was full so were contracted with an adjacent county jail nicknamed the workhouse. It was old and nasty and had a much tougher urban clientele. It took about 45 minutes to drive there and on the way, the prisoner was being chatty. He asked me to do him a favor when we got to the jail which was, don't put me in with any of those GD nutger. We get to the jail and sit the prisoner on the bench. There is a large black woman working the intake desk, and she and I process the paperwork 15 minutes later I'm headed out the door, when I stop and look at the prisoner on the bench. I turn to the woman, and say oh yeah. I forget. He has a request. The prisoner starts violently shaking his head no. The woman chuckles, and says oh yeah. What's that? I repeat his request, that he doesn't want to be put in with any GD nutger. Her eyes get real big, and she smiles at me saying yes sir, I'll take care of that. The prisoner looked like he was going to pass out. She immediately called for two guards who came from the back dragging logging chains. These were two black guys who looked like they were linebackers in the NFL. I smiled at the prisoner and walked to my cruiser. More stupid employee point a good friend. Steve worked as a locksmith for a medium security prison, a really unpleasant job apparently, he bid on and got the job as groundskeeper. He was the only actual prison employee and his four-man staff were trusty prisoners. 
the job was overseeing grounds using tractors, hand mowers, and lawn equipment. Some minor repairs were allowed, and the shop had tools for repairs. The groundskeeping HUD was not on the actual prison grounds, but had its own unmonitored employee driveway and employee entrance. There was separate locked fenced driveway that went directly into the prison. This was how the prisoners and equipment came and went point the trustees were only searched when they returned to the prison grounds either on the mowers or when returning to their cells. Otherwise the groundskeeping HUD was not frequently inspected. It was a plum prisoner job point my friend bought an older Harley which ran but not well. One trustee was a made motorcycle gang member and my friend and he bonded over motorcycles. One day Steve brought his motorcycle to work and showed it to the trustee. The trustee listened to the motor and said the bike needed bearings, which means an overhaul. A $4,000 job. If Steve could bring the crew in a hour or two before they were supposed to return to their cells, the trustee felt he could use that extra hour to overhaul the bike in a few weeks. And in the first days he totally disassembled the Harley's motor. Later that day, while returning to the prison the trustee got caught smuggling in a small screwdriver which meant this trusty crew would never return point Steve knew the groundskeeping HUD would be inspected the next morning and he got the motorcycle frame and wheels onto a pickup and taken out the shop. He didn't have time to get the motor parts which he could claim were leftover lawnmower parts but he knew that unmistakable motorcycle frame with wheels was his termination point the next day the inspectors glanced at the parts made him take all the extra parts to a secure dumpster. He was reprimanded for not inventorying tools daily and having loose mower parts. The Harley was toast, but he actually kept his job. Here in Canada, there isn't really any rap in prisons as they look at it like, how can we beat up or kill such offenders if we are ones ourselves? It was my first time in a federal pen and I didn't know this. Golden rule. The first day I got there I was assigned a cell, and when I went in, this older guy was in it, my future celly, cellmate. He told me the guy who had the bunk before me wasn't really a clean guy and I should get some disinfectant and a mop, and pointed me in the direction of the cleaning supplies room. I went and in, and I was filling my mop bucket, when I looked up, and noticed these kind of shelves on the wall, that said Government of Canada on them. In the shelves, were condoms and lube and bleach. My eyes widened, and I went back to my cell, and whispered loudly to my celly what the fuck they're encouraging rap? I told him about the condoms and he laughed. Bro, there's gay guys in here who have consensual sex, and it's their way of stopping HIV. We just use the bleach to clean out our two needles and dye our hair, if we get bored. Never been an inmate, but I did work as a jailer for a short period of time. I was always assigned to the felony pods, so I knew there were a certain number of guys in those pods that really didn't give a fuck, but I didn't dig guys around or be an asshole for no reason, so I was well liked by most of the inmates. One guy came in his first trip to the slammer because he got zoned out and drove into a gas station then proceeded to snack some cigarettes and other convenience items. I often considered the lifers to be the most laid back, especially the older ones, don't fuck them, and they won't fuck you, but mess with them, and they mess back hard. So this day I was sitting at one of the tables chatting with a couple of the older long term residents and this new guy comes in, and sits at the table. The old timers ask the new guy so what you are you in for, this faking kid never even looks up and just says murder. I knew what he was in for. He knew what he was in for and these other two well experienced prison attendees knew damn well he wasn't there for murder. One of them almost snatched him from across the table. I intervened quickly and explained to the kid that this experience could be a sheet tires he wanted to make it or as simple. He could lay low and be in and out and back to his regular life or he could enter this darker world by being a smartest when asked a simple question. I'm sure he was just scared, being his first time in, and wanted to maybe make a big bad impression, but telling two killers that you killed, when you barely have hair on your nuts, is a very bad first step. If I recall correctly he stayed in three days waiting to bond out, and he didn't leave his cell other than to grab his tray and scarf down his food, he never even looked toward the shower. Not prison, but jail point it was always dumb stuff, that we would prank them with, one example is having someone get a look at their name on their wristband and then going to the phone like they were answering it. They would then yell the new guy's name and look around. 
The new guy would finally say that's me, and then the guy on the phone would say, oh, here, it's for you. When the new guy walked over and said hello, the whole pod would start laughing. You don't get phone calls in jail. Another was messing with new cellmates. One cellmate and I had been cellmates for a while, so when we got a third in our cell, we'd lay down a cell schedule for him, with all ridiculous things such as, after lights out, we did 200 jumping jacks every Wednesday. We'd get to Wednesday and tell him to slide his portable bed under the bottom bunk and start doing jumping jacks and counting them off. They would 100% of the time join in and we'd usually get to 20 or so before we couldn't contain our laughter and then explain that there was no cell schedule or jumping jacks one time. I had been in for about a year of 15 a total 15 months and had some clout at that point. I'm not a hard ass but can handle my own and had only been in two necessary self-defense fights in that time. With more time in jail comes certain privileges. You get a better seat by the TV. You get into the front of the line for meals, etc. A new guy came into the pod that day, and I heard the door click open for food to be served, even though most people were already lined up after the announcement to line up. I went to the front and got my food first, as did others with much more time than most. This is jail, not prison, so anything over a year is a fairly long stay in the county I was in. Apparently this new guy didn't take too kindly to me, specifically, going to the front. He started staring at me for the rest of the day, a mean mug, if you will. I took a shower, and when I got out, an inmate came up to me, and told me the new guy told him, that he planned on just straight up sucker punching me. Here's the thing. Don't ever tell anyone that, especially if you're new, and don't know anyone. I was well liked throughout the pod and didn't have problems with anyone, for the most part. I was generous to those who were hungry. I was a damn fine card player. I had a sense of humor and wasn't a hard ass. I didn't tolerate disrespect from race to race and I sure as hell didn't plan on getting sucker punched. So, I, in front of the whole pod, said hey, man. I hear you've got it in your head that you're going to sucker punch me. Is this true? He said it was true. I politely asked him into myself for an actual fight, not some beach or sucker punch. Don't go into someone's cell for a fight, by the way. Who knows what they have prepared to attack you with. I didn't have anything but my fists, though. I proceeded to beat the sheet out of him. Like, he didn't get a single shot in on my face. His head and face was left bloodied and lumped. I will say that when the guards asked him what happened at dinner, he didn't say a word about me. I guess the dumb things he did was a, not respect privileges that come with time in, and b, thought a sucker punch was the answer, and told someone about it. Not prison but I was in juvenile hall. This was in Minnesota, and racial division isn't as strong up here so, even though I was half white half Hispanic, since I was loosely affiliated with a blood gang I was allowed to walk with the black guys in there, but I mostly kept my mouth shut and only got into fights when someone put hands on me. So this bigger black dude comes in for assault, and since he was a crip he was beefing with the group I was in, and he starts talking shit about how our group was weak for having a white kid in it, and tuck shots at me. He got cocky, and started pushing me around, so I pushed him back, and then he tried to tackle me, but I got him in a front face lock, and kicked my legs back to drag him down, and as soon as I had him locked down I started pushing my fist into his throat to choke him out. Eventually we got broken up by two guards and NGL I was faking terrified, but he got made fun of so much for losing to me, not only because I was white, but he was bigger than me, that he immediately lost credibility after that. There were six of us per cell, three thin metal bunks drilled against the left and right side walls, about three feet apart in height between each bunk, the bottom bunk was three feet off the ground as well, and we only had one empty top bunk left on my side, and that sheet was like a nine foot climb, to get on it sixth guy gets admitted in, and starts demanding a bottom bunk, which... I had one of them already, he was about 5 feet 8 maybe 140 lbs, mind you I'm 6 feet 2, 215 pounds, so he looked small compared to me, the guy on the other bottom bunk was much bigger than I am, dude was easily around 6 feet 6 probably pushing around 260. We both just started at him, he grabbed the phone and the cell, and started slamming it repeatedly against the box, 
Since we weren't paying attention to him, he must have watched some sort of movie or stupid prison guide or something cause he went straight for the other guy screaming and yelling. Biggest dude then got up from the bunk and walked toward him looking like a damn grizzly bear. He snatched the phone out of his hand and smacked the sheet out of him across the face with it. He must have knocked the soul out of the little guy cause he had him sitting on the toilet for like 2 or 3 days straight only getting up when one of us had to use it. His cheek was bruised for days too ha 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 he tried to sneak up to the top bunk in the middle of the night once and the biggest dude grabbed him by his pants and pulled him straight off he hit the floor pretty hard next to me and the guy told him to go sit back down ha 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 he requested a cell change and of course it was denied all in all it was one hell of warm welcoming. The stupidest thing I've seen on someone's first day of prison is my own first day. I came in so addicted to Xanax and heroin I was puking and cheating both green fluid, shaking, sweating, my temp was 104, my entire body felt like every single individual bone was breaking, and I've broken bones before I know that pain. But the worst part wasn't that part it was the psychotic sheet I was hallucinating, seeing people that weren't there hearing people that weren't there, talking to people who were never there at all. I was having awful panic attacks, waking nightmares, terrors. I was also having heart palpitations, and after a while I started having seizures. It was at this point, specifically this point, that the medical staff decided they should probably get involved and give me an anticonvulsant before I die in this faking cell with like 6 other dudes in it watching me. That was all I got though nothing to ease the withdrawals at all. Even something like Suboxone would stop my heroin withdrawals after a couple days of being clean and you can't get high off it. But they literally don't care. So it went like that every day for weeks. Don't do drugs. And if you do, remember severe Xanax withdrawal can very likely cause death. And severe Xanax withdrawal truly never ends it can and will do permanent things to your psyche. Many people who abuse Xanax get clean, and months after the withdrawals get a thing called rebound anxiety. Xanax artificially reduces anxiety which means your brain compensates by not releasing or producing and storing the chemicals to reduce anxiety. Every time you take a Xanax you rob your brain's natural ability to reduce anxiety. And many people who never had mental health problems before will be diagnosed with severe anxiety disorders after severe long term benzodiazepine use fact that sheet. There was a guy at the prison I was in, let's call him Tyrone. Tyrone was the biggest meanest blackest guy in the prison, a full foot taller than most people and everyone pretty much knew that he was running things on the inside. You needed a favor to be done? You talked to Tyrone. Somebody wouldn't stop beating on you? You talked to Tyrone. You had any problems with anybody whatsoever you talked to Tyrone. He was the big black boss man in that prison point obviously, because of this everyone knows that you don't fuck with Tyrone, don't take his seat, don't change his television channels, don't take his favorite food, nothing. It had already been like this for a couple years now with Tyrone ruling with a firm grip and iron fist, he had little contenders, and those contenders he did have he beat the fuck out of point so, in walks this lanky as white guy who thinks he can own the place, was probably used to being fed with a silver spoon or some sheet. He straight away starts causing trouble, I heard people tell him, to not do certain things, because I could hear the audible a white boy don't do that. And because he was one of the only white guys in here I knew they were talking to him, he didn't want to listen. Eventually he attracted too much attention and he saw big boy Tyrone coming over. He instantly knew he was the boss running things and you could see he was wanting to start something with Tyrone, which he soon realized he wouldn't win. Pretty soon a crowd started to gather to see what was going to happen. To see Tyrone beat the holy fuck out of this white guy, and he caught on too, and wanted to prove himself. So this lankiest tiny white boy stands up, a full foot smaller than Tyrone, puts on his mean face, clenches his fists, looks him dead in the eye and says, Ill. Suck your dick on the reg, if you keep me safe, Tyrone. Let's out a smirk and a quick laugh and says yeah you'll be alright white boy, drop by later and walks off. That was the story of Tyrone and the white boy. Worked in the hospital of a prison point tiny white guy was an enforcer for a big MC on the outside and his signature threat was a big bowie knife, which they do not let you bring inside, but that did not check his attitude at all. Flash forward like 2 hours, after he is checked and he is being beat up by a large member of one of the indigenous gangs for running his mouth off about how he could take all comers. 
got thrown in solitary for his own protection. Two weeks after he gets out of solitary, I see him sitting in the waiting room to see the head psychologist, old, crusty, I have sore and type. Calmly tells the doctor that he is going to cut himself if he does not get put back in solitary. Doctor replies okay, but I hear you have been running up a tab, so go ahead, do it, I'll get you stitched back up and sent right back out there. Time to tell me what is going on. Tatted up tiny faker just burst into tears and starts bawling about his dollar sign to K debt that he has run up in two weeks. He went back to segregation for the maximum amount of time we could keep him there. Point I think about him a lot. Point edit. Wording. Grammar. First day in jail. Only time I've ever been and will ever go. That's for sure. Point made the mistake of not keeping my stare in check at some dude's eyes. I kept eye faking him, and any time I'd get up from my chair in the pit he'd come and put his coat down on my seat. I'm glad I never ate at the same time he did. He stared at myself from his for a long time point real fuck up. The doors click open for dinner, and my cellmate stayed asleep. I went down by myself and tried to do it all the right way. Wore shoes, brought my cup down, kept to myself. Minutes later he comes out and yells at the whole pod, where my cellmate at? Who's my cellmate in 215? I said, right here. This dude was huge, and he towered over into my face. You're just gonna let a brother starve in here? Saying that I'm racist, and he's from Florida, he doesn't know what it's like out here in my state. Someone else says, that's some real sheet though. I didn't know it was my job, to let him know there was food. I owned up to it, and said it's not like that. I'm not racist, I've just never been locked up before point a person at our table said, you gonna punk his ass. He said no. I think they thought I couldn't understand them, because their speech was so cryptic in a barely audible and mouthful kind of way. Maybe some people know what I'm talking about point anyways. I got back into the cell and I apologized, saying I just didn't know. He said, this the first time you ever been locked up. Said yeah. I apologized again, and he said, say no more, man. I figured he meant that literally. I shut the fuck up after that point edit. That first guy was looking for my eyes too. Also, jail food is sheet and the institutions don't care about dental hygiene. Somewhat related story point I got pulled over and detained by the cops for marriage and a possession while the cops searched my car for my weed in Missouri point well, I had just come back from Peru two days earlier and apparently I managed to bring a bag of coca leaves through with me. I didn't even know I had, I must have left them in the pocket of a pair of pants and left it in my suitcase. When I got back I threw my suitcase in my car and didn't think about it. Coca leaves are illegal and considered cocaine in the US, so I was absolutely freaking out that I was about to get booked for that. I thought I might end up with a trafficking charge or something cop finds it, asks me what it is and why I have it. I said they use it to make an anti nausea tea, technically the truth, he tells me he's 99% certain that I'm not supposed to have a bag of coca here. But he didn't know for sure, so he was going to ignore it and let me go and recommended that I get rid of it. Point I ended up only getting G charged with marriage and a possession which is a misdemeanor in Missouri. Just had to take some anti-drug course and it was wiped from my record point but holy fuck, I was so scared that I had faked my entire life up because I forgot to check my pockets before flying back home. Jam the toilet full of a big wad of paper. Cell was on top tier, flooded the entire block. For some insane reason, the toilets just constantly have water running, like they are constantly flushing. Not sure if that's a common thing. Dude came in, went to his cell and immediately flooded the entire block while he was barricaded in his cell. Extraction unit came and stormed the unit, made everyone in the block lay face down in the flood water. Yes the water from the toilet, which was legit 2 inches deep in the block. And then they pepper sprayed the fuck out of the dude's cell, which in turn meant that we all got pepper sprayed while laying belly down outstretched in toilet water this was in gap, so it was legit 100 plus degrees in the block. Everyone was covered in toilet water and pepper spray. They drug the dude out, everyone in the block was raging mad, 
12 dudes may be in the block. The dude was back in the block 3 days later. We were all still wearing the same jumpsuits. Because jail faking sucks and that's how that goes. Thank god for soap and showers. The dude promptly got his ass beat. Was pulled from block. I assume he was taken to medical. He was fairly lumped up and bleeding, was brought right back to same block the same day, got his ass beat again, after the second time. Instead of moving him to another block, they locked him down in his cell. I was there for a month after that, and you'd never once was out of the cell. No wreck, no nothing, they literally just left him locked in the cell 24 hours a day point this was at a county jail faking brutal. Fuck jail. Damn telling that story just made me think of a bunch of faked up sheet. Glad those days are behind me. Admitted he got arrested in a motel room with a 13 year old girl. This was county jail not prison. It's no longer true that bidophiles get got locked up because Priya and all that. But they definitely are hated and there's nothing that will change that. It's also not true that the biggest toughest guy is the one who is respected unless it's high security. The man whose word means what he says and nothing less than the man who fights only for his friend slash himself and not for personal gain is the man everyone will respect. And that's all you have there, who you are as a man and snacks. I told that kid on his first day to just accept whatever sheet he gets for what he did and not to defend himself, not physically, but like verbally, because you're never going to redeem yourself in anyone's eyes at that point. Someone called him a sick faker and this kid called him a beach and that was the last time he ate, until he checked in, to protective custody. Jail is weird, you will meet the very best people and the very worst people. If I didn't have a family, that I felt I abandoned, you always will, then I would have a positive view of being incarcerated. Only like 70-80% of inmates are scumbags and criminals. That place will make them into absolute animals, that are beyond saving given enough time. Those other 20% that do more than 6 weeks can come out of it with a heart and soul of pure gold. Or they get put into segregation and their minds break. After 3 weeks I saw my imaginary friend once, they were the most human of anyone I had 4 weeks. That kid had to spend the whole time like that, and he was 18 and scared. When he gets released he's going to destroy some girl's life and all that's gonna matter is not getting caught. When that happens it'll be the third time I've seen the exact same sheet occur just like that. If you end up in jail, don't say a word. Do not trust the people coming up to you. Look for the guy that everyone else is going to. The guy that isn't putting on some tough guy act. And don't ever accept a 2 for 1 from anyone you didn't ask for something from. Please try and stay out of jail everyone, I know that sounds like a given, but you'd be surprised how many good people wrap themselves up in that kind of bullshit. My brother went to juvie for the first time at around 12 over 13 I think, because my mother and his father were on drugs, he had nobody to help him, so he turned to the people on the street. He has been out a total of 4 years since then, and he's now 28 I think, as well as a father of 2 who his wife has had to raise. If you ever get caught up in illegal things, think about your loved ones. Think about your little sister for example who used to count down the days until you were released, visit you and bring you chocolates at 10 years old, and look forward to your release like a kid on Christmas morning, then just cry when you went back in a week later because you miss your brother so, so much. Think about the fact that your loved ones will get to the point where they kind of just have to give up on you. Including your kids and your parents and whoever else, including your little sister who is not so little anymore and just saw you on national television doing a horrible thing that makes her feel completely embarrassed and ashamed, but used to it. They are going to have to stop caring about you for their own health and happiness, and that's a sad, sad thing. Be careful out there. Oh man this was my fave. My first day to 2014. It was a 30 day weekend sentence at the largest provincial prison in Quebec called Bordeaux Prison. They house like 2000 people for a maximum duration of 2 years minus a day. Since I was in school they broke up my sentence into weekends. Lucky. Especially as an anglophone from Arizona. Yay. Long story point so my first day, I get to like a 40 foot red steel door. I knock and a guard opens the shutter asking my name. I give it, and my name isn't in the log. 
he plays a prank on me saying that it normally means I don't have to stay, but with a short phone call they confirm this is my home for the weekend. Wrecked point we are put into groups of 10 going through security similar to an airport luggage check. Some guys just got off a bus and are starting their lengthy sentence and others are just doing the weekend thing like I was. This prison is a small world for Montreal lawbreakers. I enter the group room with one other dude that I heard is having his first ever day there and I hear a guy shout out, bro, Sam, what are you doing here? So now the guy I was coming in with knows a dude and it's a guy that's been there for 30 weekends so far. Now I really feel out of place. They're old school buddies and yay. Sam seemed relieved point guards tell us get up and let's go to the fun room. We get there and it looks almost like getting in line for a roller coaster. 10 rows and 10 guards. Instead of it being bars, it's tile walls that are as high as my belly button maybe. I'm 5 feet 9. So they are like tile cubicles for the strip search point it's more to direct people, not so much to cover you from other inmates seeing your goods but yay anyways. We each walk into our tiled cubicle, and there's 9 male guards and 1 female. I get the female, so I'm not even sure if I feel better about that. Experienced 30 weekends guy is on my left, and Sam is on my right. He whispers over to Sam, just do as they say, they don't fuck around. It's no biggie trust me 30 weeks is told to open his mouth, lift his tongue, and then turn around and bend over. He does it. Spread your cheeks, the guard says. He does it, and officer gets in for a closer look. They rub from bottom up across your hole to see if there's a stash in there. He turns around, that the guard says lift your testes, and he has a flashlight to check. They even pinch the shaft, to make sure there's no sheet in the urethra. Yay I heard some stories, I just got all my cloths off for this officer girl and Sam is starting with the mouth part, he passes. They go right to the balls first on Sam though. They say please lift your testes, and he replies with, no 30 weeks looks over at me with his eyes open and whispers to Sam, lift your sack bro. It goes back and forth for a bit, while tension is really rising. All the guards start to leave each inmate during the check, and walk over to his row, as if something might go down. We are just a bunch of naked guys standing in a row with fairly large police ranked guards closing in on Sam. His assigned guard says, last time Samuel, lift your faking balls 30 weeks is yelling at Sam to listen, I'm tripping out, and the other guys are laughing and enjoying the show. Sam yells back, I don't lift my faking sack for none, point sheet. Escalates three guards drop him to the floor, put his hands behind his back, while he's trying to wrestle his naked ass out of it. Two more guards get in and one puts his knee on his head against the hard tile. Sam is screaming about killing them, one guard goes in, and finger bangs his ass for a drug test, everyone yells, oh you 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 like that meme from the movie Friday. They flip him over and slap his dick around, and swipe the gooch. He's clean. They grab him by the arms and drag him out on his stomach, while you can hear his dick and balls getting tile burn on the ground. The combination of him screaming, and the squeaking skin on tile, is embedded in my head. They drag him through a giant thick metal door that is bust open. My heart is pounding. My guard walks back in front of me and she starts off with, can you plea, and looks down. My sack is way yanked up. I think I've heard my sack up the whole time. She laughs and grabs my stuff with a couple squeezes and says turn around. Flashlights my hole and doesn't even put a finger near Maya's hole. She gets close to me and says, you're one of the good ones, get dressed point C. I like to think she was talking about my goods but who knows. We all got into jump suites and left through an entirely different door than the one Sam was dragged through point I never saw Sam again. This was the first hour of my first day. I got a story about my first week in jail. I'm in my early 20s, first time ever in trouble for anything, real wet behind the ears. So my first week there, we're lining up for clothes exchange, and a deputy and inmate from my pod get into fight. They lock us down, and as we are, a deputy is going door to door asking each inmate if they saw anything. Obviously everyone's saying no, not me though. I was raised to tell the truth, so I did. Told the deputy exactly what I saw, inmate started in deputy, blah blah blah. Yup, I said that. Fresh in a pod, where everyone could hear me point I'm thinking nothing of it, hey I did my duty. 
got the real side of the story out. That's what's up. They get it all sorted and release us the day room. I'm watching TV, oblivious to what I really just actually did. The black rep sits down to talk to me. First thing he says is you know in prison you could get killed for what you did. And I laughed. Laughed thinking he was joking. I was fucking oblivious to jailhouse rules. He looked me dead in my eyes to show how serious he was. He explained to me that one point we never side with the deputies, no matter what and two point races deal with their own. For me, being black to put my nose into something that happened to a white inmate, that's all bad. He explained to be careful, I knew nothing would happen to me. He explained that I was good. Don't ask me how he knew, but he knew, and I was the rest of my stay. But he really opened my eyes to how serious my new situation in jail was I ended being a chouciver because they deputies felt like they could trust me. Got extra time out of my cell, longer visits, extra food fuck it. The person I snitched on was already having issues in the pod. People didn't like him. He ended up in adseg for a while. So let that be a lesson. If you're a inmate don't talk to deputies fuck I was dumb. Not prison. Waiting to get bail. In the dog kennels with 20 to 30 others. Maybe 20 full kennels to courts going over time. This was a Thursday before a long weekend which meant that courts closed for 4 days. Everyone desperate to have their chance in front of the judge. A bit for bail and freedom managing to avoid the extra 4 day lockdown. Anyway, once I've been caught, had my bail approved, get brought to processing for a few more hours. Processing area right next to pre-hearing kennel area point so, I was up fairly early in the day, almost first out the gate, if the first kennel. One guy in my kennel was a rattling and scratching crackhead. He went up and spat across court a judge. Must've got him or someone else point next thing I know, they got this crackhead hauled back down into the kennels. They closed down the whole court and marked it as a crime scene. Now there is an army of bust of crims that want to stomp the crackhead cause they won't get to see judge to get bail. Almost caused a riot. Forgot to mention that he ended up in protection in an isolated suicide watch cell to stop everyone getting to him. Stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Funny thing is, the crackhead would been bailed too. Got no idea why he did it point drugs man. They can make people crazy. Not the stupidest thing I've seen but an interesting story no less I did time a couple years ago. Non-violent convicts in my prison were able to get back quote gate pass jobs meaning a handful of us reported after breakfast at 6am to the outbound prisoner holding area. This is where they sent us and prisoners who were transferring to another facility, i.e. they were getting into too much sheet that they needed to be moved somewhere else. They had too many points so their security level got upped and they could no longer stay, etc. Hell I know some guys in my prison in mid-Michigan who got shipped up to a facility in the upper peninsula near the border of Wisconsin Acker they got, sent way the fuck far away from home, anyways not to be sidetracked, so myself a few others went to work every morning at another prison. We rode in a van across the street. I was a porter, so I cleaned the front of house where families sit, before visiting their inmate. Cleaning bathrooms, windows, taking out trash, etc. Other guys were yard slash maintenance crew. We got extra food. We were essentially free. If we really wanted we were outside of prison walls and could make a run for it point. But having this job had its downside. The porter I worked with was about to get out. Turns out he was running drugs from work back to our prison to make some extra cash. He told me I could get in on it and take over when he left. He said it's easy they drop it in the trash in the women's bathroom, you take it back, all good. Just gotta make it through the strip search, which was very relaxed as these co saw addicts swinging every day. Nobody wants to do that, especially when we were considered non-violent and privileged. I told him I wasn't into it many times, but I was in too deep, I already knew too much. So some random day I'm laying in my bunk watching TV and some random from a different cube on the other side of the building came and is like let me holler at you a minimum. So I went and we talked and I said I'm not into it. That didn't stop him or several others coming at me to persuade me differently. Every time I gave the same answer, I'm sorry I'm just here to do my time. Now mind you, I'm two months from going home. 
I'm not telling these people this because there is some faked up sheet people will do or threaten you with if they know you're going home soon. One of my best friends even to this day finally came out to the yard with me and I went to the original person recruiting me and I told him listen, I don't want to do the job. I'd appreciate if you leave me alone and I hope it works out. I'm 6 feet 1 inch 170 and have no fighting bones in my body. I'm a beach. But I handled it like a man and never heard from them the rest of my time. Point TLDR. I worked a job in prison that allowed me to leave the prison I lived in to work at another. Got approached to run drugs to from job back to back quote home. Respectfully declined and got the fuck out of there and home on time without so much as a scratch on my body point. If you put your head down, mind your own, stay aware of what's around you and treat others with respect prison won't be that bad or at least it wasn't for me living that way. I was in Orange County Jail late 2009 and early 2010. When I was in there I saw all sorts of sheet, but one time a guy rolled into the dorm downstairs from us. The way the dorms work is there is 64 men to a pod and there are two levels which are independent. We could see and interact with the floor below us, but only through looking at a mirrored glass wall the cops watched us through. Anyways a guy comes in around midnight, and when someone comes in it makes quite a bit of noise sometimes, especially if the person isn't considerate. I'm still awake, and so I just happen to be sitting up. I see the guy walk in and immediately put his bedroll on a bottom bunk near the entrance. This is a big no-no as you usually are assigned a bunk by whoever's leading your ace in the pod. Leader of the pod comes up to him tells him to move to a top bunk. I'll never forget this dude, his name was Cyclone, and he was absolutely in the white brotherhood type crowd. Anyways words are exchanged, and new guy is not taking us seriously. Cyclone braces himself between two bunks and lifts himself up, kind like you would do dips, except the bunks are fairly tall. And put his heel directly in the guy's face knocking the new guy out cold, I mean like dropped like a 200 pound sack of potatoes. Cops came, turned on the lights, and made everyone downstairs show their knuckles. New guy didn't snitch on the guy who hit him and nothing happened. Cops went away 3 minutes later everyone is complaining about a smell. Turns out new guy shat his pants upon being knocked out. Pod leader ends up calling the sheriffs in to get a mop to clean up said sheet. New guy ended up rolling out the next morning early, mysteriously point at it. I should mention I watched all of this from upstairs and from a mirrored reflection. That's easy, he cried. He got a DUI and a hit and run. His cellmate was cool at first. Then later that night he cried and woke him up. Next thing I heard was him being slammed to the floor and then wrestling. I can only assume he was wrapped point the stupidest thing I did was trade my cookies for someone's juice. Desserts were treated like gold. Phone time was the single most valuable thing in jail. I remember loading my account with $100. I was there for 7 days and used maybe $40 bucks and had $60 left. My cellmate asked me for the access code when he learned I got bond. I told him, but kind loudly, because I was packing my stuff. Next thing I know I see 4 people running to the phone. They are happy and yelling at me thank you amigo. I yeah amigo there gave us $60 in calls. Always know someone's listening. I was the only Hispanic in a cell block of 26 blacks, one white and me. Just stfu, don't gamble. Grab books when they are offered, helps fluff the pillows and juice you TP as well. Use a towel when you taking a sheet, common courtesy. Again don't be provoked. Just pass the time, as if you don't care, but don't be cocky. Don't talk about your crimes, why would you want to anyways? Stupidest thing I saw, girl just gets to the dorm, it's about 9am and her first day. She starts bragging almost immediately about how she was able to sneak a ball of black in with her, and how she's glad she won't be sick to literally everyone around her. She really just doesn't know how to shut up. I mean, you're in a place filled with drug addicts, a lot of them are going through withdrawals, and will do anything to get well. Bragging about having some is definitely the last thing you should be doing point. So she goes to take a shower before chow and take a guess what happens. Six girls jump her. Five hold her down while one reaches up into her to grab the dope. They leave her about 0.10 of a gram, which is nothing at all really. 
but she was in the shower, so it dissolved in the water before she even had a chance to grab it anyways. So it was basically given to her just to tease her and teach her what not to do on your first day in point the six girls got high and got away with it because she wouldn't give names and the new girl got up before the end of her first day. All because she couldn't keep her mouth shut because she thought it would make the other girls like her. Try to not tell us what he was allegedly in for so eventually we did some digging and found out he was gone a rap charge we beat the sheet out of him literally. Sheet and blood was all over the floor. Two point another guy. When we asked him if he brought anything, meaning drugs up his ass, his reply was fuck. That I'm not a criminal piece of sheet he got jumped and beat up before even getting to see the inside of his cell 3. Another guy who was an ex-military guy came onto a range and started proudly boasting how he killed over 11 Muslims in Afghanistan he got sort of lucky because he did this as soon as he came out onto the range. When guards were still there they took him off range and put him in segregation for a few months. One of the guards told us he never seen any sheet like that the guy must have a death wish when he eventually got out the hole he got jumped and faked up badly, but it wasn't on my range 4. This one's just a funny story sorta along the lines of scared straight. The jail was on overflow and minimum security was packed this kid maybe 18 to 19 years old was brought to maximum on his first day he was in for stealing from a grocery store. Well we decided to just sort it as him, and we did I along with other convinced him he was gonna be passed around, while he was here we all decided our order, of whose cell he would be coming to for the next few days till his court date. Eventually by the end of it, I told him, if you just grab onto this sock on my waist you're my beach and my beach only he looked around and other people told him that's true, so he yanked the sock super quick we all just started laughing, and then told him it's all a joke. But later on a fight broke out where some guy got beat up by three people pretty badly when we went on lockdown the kid climbed into his bunk and tied all his bed sheets around himself and just stayed like that for the entire weekend till he had caught on Monday he kept asking his cellmate if he was safe and his cellmate kept saying don't worry about it people just like to pick on the new fish. He had caught on Monday and got released I bet he never committed crime again after that. In county jail, for 10 days, grossly overpopulated. I made friends with everyone, except the guys in red jumpsuits. Made friends with a group of Nortonus and a group of Sornus. Mexican Mafia, all of them, but bitter enemies, for being born above or below some arbitrary line. I spent my 10 days trying to figure out the white of their hatred of the other party point bunch of really stupid kids, in reality. Both sets were going down for robbery, and their female members had flipped on them, so there would be no deals for light sentences. I got to hear a lot of bravado about the things they would be doing when they got out. After a decade, more for the crew that decided to rob a laundromat, I know, right, and forgot to get rid of the sword off shotgun point for my brief stint, I got to be a safe zone for both parties. To play board games before they were transferred into general population point and one jackass tried to hang himself in his cell. I heard he was going down for serious time for spousal abuse. I've heard some stupid sheet. People telling me they don't remember sheet. That they're innocent. That they didn't hurt their so that bad. I don't know man. Any time I've had to do time I got straight in my cell and start doing push ups and don't stop till my sentence is done. Nobody facts with the guy who minds his business and just exercises in his cell all day point by the way. If you've never been locked up before, when you eat your ramen packs, only use half of the seasoning. Save the other half for chow time. That sheet never has flavor. Where your chino slides in the shower. Get up early to shower to have hot water. Respect those who have been in your pod the longest. Maintain a good relationship with the inmates whose cells are by phones. They can save it for you make sure you're the first to use it before anyone else. Grind up soap and put it in a sock and sprinkle that sheet around every time someone in the cell takes a sheet. And read. Nobody has the heart to fuck with a bookworm. Thank me later. Hopefully not though point I've only had two major problems in jail, which led to me being in the hole for two months straight, and they were always altercations with guys who didn't abide by these rules, or crackheads that tried stealing your sheet cause they didn't know who you are, and how much respect you had in the pod point Willie Johnson, 
If you're reading this by any chance I never got to see you after they separated us. But how tf did that broken nose feel? So this actually happened to me. When I was in a pretrial center they were replacing all the locks in my unit, not sure if it was just my unit or all of them, so they kept us in the gymnasium all day. One half, there was a big folding divider down the middle, had a TV and PS2 and food, bread, toaster, margarine lol, and the other side had a blue mat for each inmate with bathrooms on either side. I had to sheet, so I just went for the closest bathroom. About halfway through my sheet I was lucky I was already on a toilet, because it sounded like an enraged silverback was pounding on the door demanding to know what the fuck I was doing in the bathroom. So I opened the door, and told this faking Goliath, that I had just sheet. He said he was gonna kill me, because that's the bathroom, where they smoke weed and blow it into the toilet I had no idea that, if you bail out the shutter it sucks the smoke into the pipes. Luckily, the unit's new guy, guy came over, and saved Myers big time and they just made me scrub the sheet out of the bathroom and rebail the toilet. I was terrified, and really started to rethink my life at that point. You know, I have a story point so, I've been to jail once, twice on the same case actually. I'm a suburban kid and I fucking know it point I got extradited down to the middle of nowhere, and booked in at like, midnight. The thing is, I really need mental stimulation to relax. There was one celly with like a Hitler history book and a thorn crown tattoo on his forehead along with the phrase I'm not human point I woke his ass up and asked for his book. To which he obliged. Had some weird late night reading and rifted off point we talked the next morning and he said he couldn't tell if I was stupid or if it was just my first time in jail. I said a little of both, and thanked him point we both actually got released later, that day and dude offered me a place to stay. I was kind of flat broke, in the middle of nowhere, and it was like negative 4 degrees f out. So, I ended up staying in a church property with this dude overnight, while I got sheet together. Scared for my fucking life tbh point honestly, dude was out there. Absolute drug addict, well known town homeless and recurrent county inmate. He was, well intentioned, though I think. Seemed like the kind of person the system just failed. I remember being thankful, that a church had tried to intervene, and hoping that man found more in his life point god. I've come so far. There's a lot of stupid things you can do but for me, the smartest thing you can do, is what probably saved me a lot of hassles, and maybe even a beating or two point. When I was arrested I had a paycheck from work on me, close to $700. I don't know how it works elsewhere but here in Canada, any money you have on you gets deposited into your prison canteen account canteen or commissary, the store inside jail you can order food from. So with my check deposited, I was flush. On remand I had seen guys run stores out of their cells. Basically you have a bunch of food from canteen that you loan out to other cons with interest. Oh, you want to play in the poker game or want to make a bet on the football game, but canteen is only once a week and you don't have anything to wager with. Come see the store and get a six pack of soda and pay back nine on canteen day. Two bags of chips. Payback 3, etc. Point when I got off remand and was sent to federal prison, for the first few days I watched people and finally figured out who was the most respected, most feared con. Turned out it was this big native American guy who was doing 25 years for shooting a RCMP officer in the face. Big guy killed a COP equals respect. His name was Junior and no one faked with Junior. So one day I approached him and started talking, and thankfully we hit it off. I proposed a partnership with him, I had some money, and wanted to run a store you be the muscle, and collect if someone wouldn't pay, I'll run the store and we'll split everything 50 over 50. He agreed and we were off to the races. Now I had the most feared guy in the joint as a friend, and I was his source of income, so he could pay for tattoos or drugs, and you didn't fuck with Junior's payday. If anything happened to me, and I got taken off his cell block or worse, anything that interfered with him making his cut every week there would be hell to pay, and he didn't fuck around. I saw him put a shank against a guy's throat over unpaid chocolate bars we became good friends to boot, and now I had unsaid protection and a steady source of income. 
Plus I had a prescription inside for Welbutrin, an antidepressant that when crushed and snorted, is basically like a mild cocaine which I sold to other inmates sometimes, and you also don't fuck with any souse of drugs inside. No one wants the guy who gets legal cocaine beaten and sent to the hospital or another block or sent to another jail point sorry for the long explanation. Basically, make yourself valuable. Between that and being respectful, you're golden. Long story short, I was in PC and I normally shared a cell designed for one person with two other guys. At the time we received this particular third, I'd already spent a number of weeks with this guy in for attempted murder of his sister-in-law. He said he was just driving the car, like I give a sheet, so they dumped this skinny kid in the cell. He's got a bloody nose, so he's sniffing like crazy, but he apparently just wants to be left alone. Fine by me. It might have been my first time in jail, but I know how to mind my own business. My celly, however, being more of a career criminal, wanted to badger him about his charges eventually. He told us what happened. He'd been talking to a girl on the bus, thought she liked him, and so grabbed her box. Now, this was way before Trump running for president of the US was a thing. For some reason, maybe just the way he said it, or that it came out of nowhere, but this was hilarious to us for a good few minutes. When we caught our breath we are like, dude, you know you can't just do that, right? Long story short, he wasn't repentant about it, and my celly had him kicked out of our cell on threat of violence. Point the lesson of the story is, especially if you're in PC, have a cover story. If you're in on such charges, don't make people question it. Don't talk about your charges, if you can help it, and mind your own damn business. I saw graffiti in a Lindsay holding cell that said something along the lines of PCs know how to be solid. That is, unlike the general population, we don't pry about people's charges, we don't snitch, and we mind our own business, and we do our own time. It's self-serving, sure, but if I don't know about your bad charges and you don't know about mine then we can coexist without feeling obligated to act out. It's a perfect example of ignorance is bliss point seriously, though, attempted murder Sally was a pain in the ass. He was unhappy about a co lying about the weather to avoid letting us go to yard, so he covered the window and implied that he was going to hurt me. Put me in the awkward position of having to choose to either not answer and let them think I was hurt or disobeying a guy twice my size and saying that I was fine. He wasn't the worst Sally I had, nor was that the worst situation I was in that year, but he was one of the few I tried to quietly get moved because I was sick of him starting sheet with the co's. Still, the guy was not dumb, just not well educated, and he demolished me at chess. Not my story, but my dad's. This would have taken place back in the 70s. He was in jail and there was a very strong racial divide. He said that people might have respect for certain others and other racial groups if they were particularly tough or strong or noble or whatever, but they didn't really mix much. White guys were generally automatically assumed to be the weaker group, and so all the whites had to be as crazy as they could be if anyone faked with one of them, or the white guys had to go off. Bring the whole faking place down point a new white guy came into the jail. He was from the suburbs, and not the city. The other white guys immediately came to talk to himself and tell him to join their group, explaining they all had to stick together. The new guy said no way, and had a very PC speech prepared about how hard black people have it, or whatever a week or so later he asked a black guy for shorts on his cigarette. The guy looked at him, smirked, and said sure white boy, and flicked the cig across the room. Pick it up, my dad and his group watched as the new guy went, and picked it up off the floor, and smoked the rest. They immediately went to the warden, and explained that this guy was going to get killed. He was taken out of gen pop for the rest of his stay there, and I think was eventually transferred. Fact there's so many, but this was my cellmate, so I remember it well. He got on the phone, and called his girlfriend, who he locked up for beating up, and pointing a gun at, and talked about everything he didn't apologized. He wasn't supposed to have any contact with her at all. So he got an extra charge for that, and they had him on tape admitting to everything he did, which they used against him, because his girlfriend ended up saying she wouldn't press charges or testify, in the end they didn't need her, because they had the recordings. 
I told him after the first call that they record that sheet and listen to the tapes, especially when you first go in, because you're probably gonna call someone and explain why you're in there and what happened. After that the damage was done, but he still kept calling her, so you can't say I didn't warn him. He ended taking a deal where he got out after a few months in county with a sheet load of crazy probation, two strikes and an 8 year suspended sentence if he violates probation. I don't know whatever happened to him, but I don't see him not violating probation in the future. I was on the workers camp portion of maximum security prison in Texas, Beto unit, which is located on about 20,000 acres of farmland. We did things like feed slash clean hog barns, run the tracking dogs, drive tractors and such. It wasn't fenced in, like the giant, poured concrete three-story structure that was the main building directly across from us that housed a lot of, mostly 20 to 50 year old, people with capital murder sentences, child rapists etc. It was the closest thing to freedom you could get in prison. And the prison we were part of is one of most notorious slash dangerous places in Texas some new guy came to the camp, and he was told his job was back gate, and what time he normally went to work. When it's time to turn out for work, a boss will call you and tell you to turn out for work which is a process where you go up to the front of the camp, strip out, get signed out, and then you'll take a right on the road, walk about one quarter mile, then a left and another quarter mile and you're at the back gate. Well when it was time for him to work, he just took off walking and skipped all that and took a left instead of a right, walked all the way past this prison, walked past another prison unit where TDCJ and takes new inmates, past the warden's house and got all the way past the watchtowers with rifles, questioning anything before he got to the main public road where the guard shack was before that guy completely freaked out. They quickly locked him up in the main building thinking he was trying to escape. Basically went from heaven to hell on earth on his first day. More of a welcome game. Most noobers fell for it 10pm. Hall of 40 beds. Everyone in bed. Someone tells the new dude to go. Turn off the lights new dude goes off to do. Can't find the switch. By the toilets. Still can't find. Eventually. Someone cracks up giggling and everyone joins. Lights on 24 over 7. Switches in control room, learn to sleep with lights in your face, and lots of randomly noisy dudes, oh, and the dude who asked me to draw something on his chest with a pen he had. I thought silly guy playing, pretend to two next thing, he's in the toilets, crouching with another guy under the stainless steel sink, using a lighter to make black powder on the bottom of said sink, scraped and gathered it into paper, and smeared that gunk into the scar, that the other dude helped trace with something sharp over my penmanship. Dude was really making a tattoo out of that drawing he asked me for. But instead of ink was making a permanent scar by deliberately causing inflammation, or what? Former co. The best is, when a newbie is getting dressed in, and you tell him to take his clothes off, and hand them to you, and he just looks at you, and asks for privacy. We had so many that refuse, and then you tell them back quote you're not the first man, that had to strip down. The ones that refuse go from county blues to county yellow, with a little county black on the mize. Shoe is a beach for an ubi point story too. There was a white dude that got into fight with the city cops and was in on some serious charges for murder for hire. The city are beaches and don't like fighting, so we would have to go out pull their prisoners out of their vehicles. I had a partner on SWAT that was 6 feet 3, 320 lbs a real brick sheet house of man. I'm 6 feet 250 lbs. We ask the guy to get out of the car and he says no. We tell him back quote listen man, just get out of the car, we can book you in, and then you can talk on the phone. The guy refuses. My buddy says back quote pull this mother faker out, the guy says to me back quote, if that net good touches me, I'll kill both of you. My buddy takes out these black gloves and starts to put them on, and I pull out the vinyl gloves I had, and the dude looks at my hands, and then my buddies, and says back quote why, are your gloves different than his, what are you gonna do with those? My buddy still adjusting his gloves says back quote these go round your throat. The guy nearly sheet s himself, turns even whiter shade, that he already is and starts sweating. I don't think I've seen reality set in quite that hard before. 
The guy after being pat down and searched, pukes all over the transfer cell. My buddy says back quote what the fuck man. A w w sheet, Matherfuck are you gonna clean this sheet up? The guy says yes sir, sir yes what you say point I'm so glad I don't do that sheet no more. Best and worst job I ever had. I'm late and this probably will get buried. Had a guy come in on his first day and decided he would try to beat up the biggest toughest looking dude in the yard now bear in mind this isn't the US this is Belgium so generally speaking there is a minimal amount of gangs here they still exist but they're less violent and not as aggressive. Anyway he didn't realize that the big tough guy was indeed very big and insanely strong. But he also had a mental disability save to say the new dude won easily, and when the big guy was on the ground with a broken nose broken arm and dislocated shoulder he looked around looking real happy about it. I have never seen a Belgian prison turn so violent the new dude was beaten to a greasy pulp and never returned to Gen Pop later heard from a guard that he had severe brain damage and was moved to the hospital wing never saw him again point second this dude came in acting tough thinking it would be exactly like Juvie he learned pretty quickly that it wasn't he shat in the shower twice which we the other inmates had to clean. He was in a cell with a 60 something year old dude who was the most gentle guy I have ever met. He was in jail for shooting a burglar, but in Belgium guns aren't nearly as accessible as in other countries, so he got charged for murder he didn't get sentenced for that because self defense, but he was charged with illegal possession of a firearm which amounted to 5 years 4 years in jail and 1. Yeah how's arrest still keep in touch to him to this day really sweet dude oh I'm rambling, so of course what the new guy decided to do was master, bait. Really faking loudly I could hear it from my bunk at the other side of the cell block now this 60 something year old dude was having none of it, so he got up from his bunk and asked him to cut it out and go find a toilet or something turns out the best course of action was to beat the man yes a newly 18 year old punched a 60 year old. His sentence was originally like a year well he got slapped with 5 more years for aggravated assault and assault in the elderly, yes that is a thing here, karma is a beach. I have one more this was actually me this one is pretty funny. So I just got in got charged with sexual assault, if a minor it isn't as bad as it sounds I was 21 my girlfriend was 17 we are still together by the way well her parents went to the police and because the age of consent is 18 in Belgium I got charged all that jazz very fun 3 years in prison. Ok so I got in very nervous I was the stereotypical nerd with glasses no muscle just brain. Well the old guy mentioned above decided he would befriend me and gave me some tips, but he left out one thing which he thought was common sense, if the wet floor sign was outside, if the shower some dude was master, baiting while I walked in oblivious, only to come face to face with a guy furiously beating his meat I nopes out of there really quickly must have looked kinda funny new dude goes in showers bolts out of it 2 seconds. Later XD I made sure to tell every new guy I got in contact with to never go into the shower when the sign is there. Third time of first day. 20 years old, and jail not prison, picked up for possession and contributing to delinquency of minors. I had just finished a deal. My buddy's underage brother and friend was walking by, carrying a bunch of beer, and asked to sit down in my car for a minute. Soon after, cops walk by and see them in the back with beer. Getting to the short, we all go to jail point but his brother is 17, so he goes home, it's me and his friend they put us in two separate cells. 30 minutes in, I hear dude yelling I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not Frankie. While being assaulted by his new cellmate point, so they put us together, while his violent tweaker. Previous Selmich yells down the block to the girl he was arrested with, asking her to marry him, then offering anyone dollar sign 10k to get him out. I swear I got the money point cops arrested some old hippie dude soon after. Impounded his van, took his dog, said he was a suspect in a heist. He happened to turn around in a parking lot, just after the cops showed up. The business had gotten broken into earlier, and they brought him in for returning to the crime. A few hours later they realized it was the crazy dude in the cell next to us who did it and let the hippie go point hip asks if he could stay until morning cause his van was his home, impounders closed for the night and where was his dog. Cops told him there was nothing they could do. 
The next day, a kid who was along with drug dealer friend from earlier the day before, wound up in jail with me for trying to steal the car I had been driving. My roommate's car, as it was still sitting in the same spot on the side of the road since my subsequent incarceration. I only learned the reason afterward, or I'd have fought him for lack of respect, and props got my ass beat. The rest of my stay was uneventful, but gives you an idea of the fun you might experience in 24 hours of lockup. And one day can easily become 5 days, if you go in on a Friday. When I was locked up, when fresh people came, in that you could tell, have never been locked up, or had never been to that facility, before they would get faked with multiple ways, in varying degrees of intensities. We had this computer kiosk thing next to the phones you order your commissary from and request trips to medical etc, and it looked like a computer screen with a touch screen pad. When the noobers came in people would tell them sheet like yo the county doesn't start your time until you scan your mattress on the computer. People would usually wait until someone had been there a few days to tell them this. You would see the person all awkward and nervous, start panicking and drag their mattress pad out the cell and into the middle of the pod to the kiosk. All mattress pads had a tag sewn on it that had serial numbers of barcode on it. You would see the guy picking up this limp mattress pad and drag it across the screen over and over, then start lightly slapping the mattress tag against the screen to try to get it to scan. The whole time people would be yelling at him to scan it differently, depending who the co was in the pod at the time, was the deciding factor if the inmate got smoked for it or not. Friend of mine is a co here in PA. He said they had this punkers white kid gangster come in on a third degree murder charge 10 to 20 year sentence. Mind you he never pulled the trigger and didn't kill anyone, but it was part of a robbery, so he was charged because it happened in commission of another felony. Anyways, he said this kid was a mouthy pose from day one. Refused orders from the co's etc he figured because he had a murder charge he could do what he wanted. So my friend and another co were taking him and a few other inmates to the nurse. Anyways when my friend asked him to do something he told him to go fuck himself. At this point he had enough of this punk kid, so he said I'm going to fix your ass. He sent him, and the whole group he was with to the hole. Needless to say he had just pissed off the others, because they are getting punished for his stupidity. So he said the day they were getting out, he went to the kid, and said you learn your lesson yet, and wouldn't you know it the kid told him to go fuck himself again thus cancelling everyone getting out few weeks after they got out this kid wound up in medical severely beaten and sodomized so bad he had to have surgery to repair his rectal area point moral of the story you mess with the bull you get the horns or in his case the d i'm a current co in county jail going on 10 years now i worked a minimum security unit for a few years new inmates sentenced to less than a year would arrive to the unit around the same time each day the unit had an open roof and a grassy area between the housing pod entrances. There were three very large sewer covers in the middle of the grass to allow for water drainage. My co-worker and I decided that we should drag the fire hose out to the sewer cover to prank the new arrivals. I escorted the new arrivals to the housing pod and upon arrival all the new guys were instructed to line up on the sidewalk and wait while I get the cell assignments. I went into my office overlooking the grassy area, while my partner comes from the opposite hallway with a broomstick in his hand. He walks into the grass and starts to address the new inmates telling them the rules and expectations while on the housing unit. Rule number one, everybody must be standing for headcount. My co-worker then jams the broomstick into the sewer drain poking and jabbing while yelling at the hidden inmate below and threatening to use the hose again. The new inmate's jaws dropped to the ground solo you cold parked a garbage truck in there. The inmates inside the pods gave away the joke when they were laughing and banging on the glass making fun of the new guys. Welcome to the pod motherfuckers. We were laughing about it for weeks with the inmates. Needless to say, we were a fun group of CEOs to work with. Wasn't happy with the way things were at Cha before lockdown 4 count impersonated an inmate orderly there was surely 2 minutes left till lockdown that was I'm sure the thought process walking towards the back of the kitchen spots the silver cart opens the door and there's the loose fajita chicken w spices sprinkled pepper no wrap though soon as eyes caught glimpse after first attempting to pull the tray out before realizing. There is these sliders top on top of each other last 10 slots must pull tray completely out before lid can be open. 
just as one would in any situation that ensnaring the thought of just one quick handful was enticed too soon that tray, and that tray only fell all over well that was just the beginning for this poor fella and two meters the CO at the post, stationed in unit had willingly given this man two biohazard bags. To put his personal hygiene in. There was chicken spilled on the floor a loud racket moments ago, yet chicken was urging this obvious hungry specimen so kicking the conspicuous chicken under the cart he then proceeded to pull two more trays completely out and began filling the hazard bags which only needed one tray y2 he does not know just was hungry egg poor guy anyway walking slowly out of the kitchen in a swaying kind of old way. There was no indication things were at all suitable for rules glancing over at the post he quick snaps his neck back in front and walks step by step as the bulge pronounces itself most affording lol buck yells hostetler. After noticing every single inmate is in the cell looking out their panel window this lost pup done, did the most w this already ain't he the kid that thought he was gone exercise on our platform? What's that? Huh. You heard me. What's in your pockets? Oh h h well I was just putting things I like in there from Art Sencraft. Oh yeah let's see. For Eli was just omw to sell sir I'll be headed back I promise. Let's see or he'll pull them out for you. Pulling them out for him, the then quiet unit burst in laughter and Buck has mesmerized himself as a smirk then graces his old pale and pasty skin. Okay hostetler I'm going to have to write you up okay. Yup what's the punishment? Three days cell confinement. Haha <laughs> that's all. Oh you want me to throw two more on I can. Nah sir I'm good, thanks.